Welcome to the Lindsay and Tony podcast, where we talk about spirituality, business, and life experiences. In this podcast, we're bringing our private conversations to you. We believe that it's through discussion, action, and reflection that true change occurs. Before I let you hear the show introduction, I want to remind you about my mentoring programs, Unlock Your Inner Medium, the foundational level, and Unlock Your Inner Medium, the next level. The foundational level is for beginners to mediumship, and the next level is for mediums that have already given mediumship readings, and they want to take their mediumship to the next level. To learn more about my programs, go to lindsaymarino.com. Hello and welcome to episode 25, The Daily Life of a Medium. In this episode, Tony and I talk all about our experiences living as mediums. We're humans too, but at the same time, there are moments where we have so many extra sensitive things come into play from the spirit realm, and we will share those with you. So we can't wait for you to listen to the show. Enjoy it. Hi guys, welcome back. We're so excited that you're here. Today we are talking about the daily life of a medium. We thought this would be an interesting show because we've covered so much about mediumship and connecting with the other side, but we're going to kind of mix our stories in today. Right, because we have stories for hours and hours (laughs) and hours about this, and I feel like we can give some good insight to people that are interested in what it's like to actually live as a medium. Yeah. So, and Lindsay's a full-time working medium, so what's that like? And for, the, for those of you that are not mediums, you'll understand a little bit more about mediumship and what yeah. actually happens, too. Yeah, because we, I always get common questions where people will say, well, do you pick up anything on me? You know, when I'm just standing here, can you pick up on who's around me? And that's a common question, I think, that I get that I've gotten over the years and I feel as though it's something to start with. It is because everybody's always like, oh, you're a medium, so what are you picking up about me right now? Yes. And what Lindsay always says and what I say and what most mediums always say is that we're we're not always open. We don't leave ourselves open all day long because if you do that, like I used to do, I used to leave my intuition and everything open all day long and I would just be drained all day long because it's just so much energy to take in yeah when i first started uncovering this ability i actually kept on feeling like i was excited to tune into the other side so i should probably go back a few steps and say what is a medium a medium is a person that can connect to those that have passed away so the the physical realm we're in the physical realm us humans connecting with those that have passed that's a medium So I personally believe that anyone can be a medium. It's a choice if you want to tune into that frequency. Sometimes there are people that are born with this ability where they're just extra sensitive from the time that they're very little. Other people, there's different moments in their life where they'll want to kind of go down that road and say, hmm, what is it like? For both Tony and I, we've always been extra sensitive to different things, but I feel as though it came later in life where we start to become aware of it. Right, I feel like it just kind of happened. And that's the story I hear with a lot of mediums is either like a car wreck or somebody passing away or something that like unravels their life and then opens up this potential that's in, that I believe is within everybody. But sometimes it takes life shaking you up to open up that potential. And that's exactly what happened to me when I was, what was it, 23? three yeah 23 years old mm-hmm. and when I first started talking to Lindsay um, what shook my life up is I talked to Lindsay on the phone that night in December 6 2010 I still remember the date, and I knew that I had to be with her so that shook my life up I was like what the heck is going on here and I was already open to everybody being connected so I trusted my instinct on that one and then I started to tap into the other side mm-hmm. and receive signs daily from the moment I started talking to Lindsay literally it was probably the next day or maybe within that week I started to see smiley faces and hearts and then over these last seven years it just has gotten more intense every single day and this year specifically 2018 I feel like it's taken on a whole nother life of its own like I've had so many experiences with um, some of my close friends who I would never think that I would share this with but Mm -hmm. 
in the moment I was pulled to share certain pieces of information with, even though I didn't want to. And that's what will happen a lot of times. I find is as you're on this journey, you'll just be out in public talking with people. Like I was at the Grand Canyon with my friend. This is one of the times and uh, things just unraveled there. And yeah. my instinct told me to start talking and I did. And I think that's, that's what happens too. And like Lindsay said, at the beginning when you're excited about this, you, you, you'll you want to keep it open all day long. And like there's been times recently to where I'm up at 11 o'clock at night and I'm like, Lindsay, I'm still picking up information. Yeah, and I- And Lindsay's like, him. just relax and just let's go to sleep and start another day. Yeah, that kind of answers the question at the very beginning where are you constantly, are you picking up information about me when you hang out with someone, even if it's a stranger? And I close down. So at, I do not pick up any information unless there is um, a moment of openness where I'm having a conversation. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm open now. I, either I'm going to give a reading, like today it actually happened, but it was someone that I knew um, that it just kind of came out in conversation. I'm like, are you open to if? if I pick up anything and they said yes. So that sort of thing happens, but it's like an ethical thing. You don't go up to random people and start giving them messages for me personally. But at the very beginning, I was getting messages and I was giving them to random people. And now looking back, I'm like, oh, you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know um, who's open to this sort of thing. And you have to kind of be careful of people's personal space. but. Right, because it's basically like you're looking at people naked and they don't like <laughs> yeah. that because you're like seeing th all of it and they can feel it because you can feel when somebody is really looking and studying your energy, it's uncomfortable. And I mean, thinking about the creepy way too, especially for females when they're walking out and they feel guys looking at them, it's yeah. kind of like that, but even yeah, more. you're invading them. But you're invading their space, like you're more exposed because you're not only looking at the physical part, you're looking at like the deep part of their mind to where yeah. not only a deep part of their mind but people that have passed away that were significant to them like they're they start to cut start coming through so Lindsay's exactly right to where you don't want to just say this to everybody yeah but there are times I believe to where you'll meet a stranger and it just feels right and you're pulled to it and it feels light but I feel like you have to get to a place to really know your gift and to know yourself yeah. Before those things really start to happen. Because it can be really happen. crossing boundaries. It can, and you can be confused. Like I know sometimes people think, and I, it's happened to me and Lindsay before, to where when your mind's cluttered and you're not as relaxed. Because I feel to tap into this gift, gift, you must be relaxed, and you have to have like a relaxed state of mind. And if you're not, you could confuse yourself and think, oh, that was my instinct telling me to do that, but it really wasn't. Maybe it was your ego, we'll call yeah. it, pulling you to go give somebody a reading because you want, want it practice. So yeah. it's really about getting to know yourself personally on a human perspective because we're human still. And then once you know your energy and you become aware of your energy, then you could sense the subtle differences between yes. everything else. And I think that's a huge reason why Lindsay and I do the podcast and why a lot of our episodes are over mindset development because I believe in order to tap into the other side and tap into your instincts, Mindset development, like shaping your mind and getting to that relaxed state is one of the most cornerstone pieces of this whole process. Yeah, and that's the one biggest piece that you could easily miss with mediumship. Yes, we're connecting with the other side, but also, yes, like Tony said, we're living a human life. And having that balance between the two is so huge because for me, I wouldn't be good for my clients. If I was constantly opening up and so heightened to the other side um, and giving readings all day um, as that medium and being <clears throat> in that realm, I wouldn't be able to live a human life and I, I wouldn't energetically, it just wouldn't be balanced. And I've done that before. Mm -hmm. At the very beginning, I was constantly very open, um, wanting to, very on. And it's important to know that just by intention, you can shut it off. And I'm saying shutting it off. When I say shut off, it means like, okay, I'm closed for business when it comes to, you know, mediumship readings. Right now I'm gonna have fun and be outside and be at the park and enjoy this human yeah. life. Yeah, and tune into the trees, tune into nature, tune into your own nature. 
rather than tuning into everybody else's energy. Yeah. Which is okay to and do sometimes. And there's a difference. And I know we've talked about this and it is just a name. And I know we've gone back and forth about psychic versus mediumship. But when you're con connecting mediumistically, you're connecting with the spirit realm. When you're connecting on a psychic level, you're connecting with the person's energy. Right. You know, and that's the big thing. We're open to receive messages for ourselves. Like when we are walking around and all of a sudden we sense our past loved one around, we're open for that. Like we're constantly, we're aware and we know when our past loved ones are hanging out with us on our road trips and they're sitting in the back seat with, you know, imagining their hands on two seats, just imagining that energy and feeling that love for them. Yes, we're aware of that, but are we on for everyone else constantly giving them messages? No. No, it's I impossible. To, I actually, like my daily life as a medium, when I'm doing this work and I, I'm working with clients, so I usually only do readings a few times a week and I'll either do it on the phone or on video, sometimes in person. And then we hang out with our dog, Romeo. Um, we do things every human does. Yeah, we go for walks on trails. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing that. We're in St. Louis, the St. Louis area right now in Tony's hometown. So we've just been really outside a lot and that's a huge thing. Um, to do as a medium. I feel like we spend a lot of our time playing, like we big do. kids, because that's like a huge part. You'll find in our episodes um, on our podcast, that's a huge part of what our philosophy of life is, is like play, like to play like a kid, to play like a human, go experience every part of the earth that you want to experience, because then you're recharged. And when you go to give the reading, it's going to be that much more impactful because you're charged which allows the other person to be charged. Because if you go around trying to leave yourself open all day long, like sometimes it still happens to me and maybe yeah. it happens to Lindsay sometimes, but then she's aware and she's like, wait, I, got, I, I need to shut down yeah. and I need to go play. And you feel that. And that's like an important part of this process is understanding when to shut down and when to allow your gift to be open. And like Lindsay said, I feel like I stay open to receive messages from my past loved ones yeah, which I and from God or the universe, whatever you want to call it. I feel like I'm open to that all day long, but that's a different kind of openness to where yeah, it feels different. You don't need to focus on that really because it's so it just spontaneously happens as you're living your life. So for example, when we were in Chicago last week, I was driving, um, from, from, uh, what is it called? Wooddale yeah. to towards downtown to see one of my friends. And all of a sudden, I started to feel my aunt, my uncle, and another, another one of my friends in the car. And it just spontaneously happened. And it happened for me, it happened, I'm trying to think specifically, but you a lot of- You went to a game, right? Well, I went, that was another day. This was a couple days before. This is when they first started, like when oh. we first got to Chicago, my aunt, my uncle, and another one of my friends was giving, they were giving me very clear signs. And they do this through um, emotion, like they'll, I'll feel their, their energy right next to me. So I'll feel their emotions right next to me. And then they'll touch me too. And then they'll, they'll show road signs to me. And, um, that's exactly how they were giving me signs in the car. I'm driving and then I'm like, I acknowledge them. I'm like, Oh, Hey, what's up? You know, how, how is everything going? And I'm just talking to them like I would with Lindsay yeah. and I'm giving them attention. So that was energizing for me. Mm -hmm. So that didn't take anything. I don't feel like that took energy away that like energized me. And it just so happened the next day, I believe it was, the day after, uh, my friend Chance, I go over and I drive to his house again, and this is another day, and we're going to go bike riding. And he's like, well, we have a change of plans. And I'm like, okay, what's the change of plans? And he's like, well, I, I got two free tickets to the Cubs game, and they're excellent seats. Like, they're some of the best seats. I'm like, all right, cool, let's ride our bikes to the Cubs game and go there. Well, ironically, the last time Chance was at the Cubs game, even though he lives in Chicago now, he's from St. Louis. The last time he was there was about 15 years um, before when we went with my aunt Diane and my uncle Floyd, the same people who were giving me signs the, the so couple, couple days before. before. Goosebumps. Yeah, and here's the thing. So we go to the game and we bring the tickets there and we realize like we're all the way down behind home plate, maybe about 20 rows from the field really good seats, but we realize specifically where we were at, right above us was where my Aunt Diane, Uncle Floyd, and me and Chance, we sat 15 years before that. So 
some people could say that's a coincidence, but I don't believe that. I believe my aunt Diane and uncle were coming through me the days before and they made this happen. Yeah. They made these tickets come together. They were part of this process because it's not every day my buddy in Chicago had tickets handed over to him. His, his friend that worked with him just so happened the night before to give him those tickets. So I feel like I'm always open for signs. Mm -hmm. You're always open for signs for yourself. Yeah, definitely. I love that story. It gave me goosebumps the first time I heard it, and it actually just happened like yeah, a couple weeks was, ago. Yeah, well, last week. Yeah, last week. Oh, I'm God. losing track Everything's of time. Everything's blending but, um, together because we've been traveling for a long time. But that's the kind of thing that spontaneously happens mm -hmm. when you are open to it. I feel like, like Dr. Dyer talks a lot about that, is like huge shifts will happen in your life. Huge things will happen in your life as long as you're open to it. Yeah, that's so true. And as you were talking, I was thinking of a story because it just came up. Um, I was, I don't know if I even got to tell you, Tony. What? But I was at the store the other day because we were doing a podcast episode, this was actually yesterday, and our memory card got filled. So we were in the middle of doing the episode, and we're like, oh my gosh, last minute we have to redo. So you gotta get kind of behind the scenes um, information. So I left to go to the store, and a friend of mine had just passed away. He passed away. Now it's been like, what, two weeks or something? I'm losing strength. He's of been time. coming through to both of us, Tony and I, and Tony never met him at all. And I was in the car, felt his presence, started to have a conversation with him in the car. And actually, I was talking out loud during this point. And I was saying, So, how's it going? Like, I'm sure there's a lot of changes happening right now, you know? And the essence of what that what he shared was he's like, oh my gosh, like pretty much don't worry about me. It's cool. He kept saying it's cool. And that's what he would say. And he's like, it's like a mind game. Like he kept pointing to his head. Did I tell you this yet? Um, I don't think okay, so. Okay, no. You would remember this. Yeah. So he kept on saying that it's like a mind game. And I, going back and forth with him, he pretty much told me what he was experiencing on the other side, looking down at his life. And he shared that there were moments in his life, and he had difficult moments come up in life, um, that he would have difficulty. And there were times where he took things too seriously in his life. And what he realized was after he passed, it was like a game. So he knew that everyone was exiting. Like there would be a time everyone would die, you know, in quotes, die, and go to the spirit realm and come back, you know, home. But during these moments of life, it was almost like he could have made it more hard for himself by taking things more seriously, or he could just go with the moment and go with the flow of life and, and just kind of pivot throughout these moments. Do you understand mm -hmm. that? So it was a message that was so clear when it came through and something that I know, but the way that he communicated with me and the essence of these messages was so powerful. And I started to realize that I, it just shifted something in me. I, I already knew it, but he said pretty much it's like a game, the way that he described it. It's like a game. Like, how are you going to get out? You know, how are you mm -hmm. going to get to the finish line? And you could either make it complicated for yourself or you can make it easy for yourself. And the one thing he said was, don't take yourself too seriously. And I thought, wow, that, that's something that I knew, but I had to hear it like that. Yeah, and you had to feel it like that. I had to feel Because I feel like it. it's like a deep feeling that you can't really describe. Like I, you could tell someone in words, oh, you you know, you could say that in words, but the way that he brought it to you. Yeah. It's kind of like some of the top teachers that ever walked the planet. They say the same things as like a lot of other people, right. but it's the depth of where they're saying it from. And that's what you could feel. You can't put that in words. And how are you going to receive the message? And are you going to receive it? And you obviously received it. I needed it, it at, that at that moment to hear what he, what I already knew, but how he said it, it just, I was so happy for him. Like I was so excited for, for that him. clarity that he got that every single moment in his life, he had awesome moments. He had, he lived it up, but at the same time, he had a lot of difficult stuff come up in his right. life. But he was able to see the purpose in it and the everything. Purpose in it. And I'm able to see, oh my gosh, I don't have to take things so seriously. Yeah. 
sometimes Tony will say, "Stop being so serious." And I'm like, I'm "She's not serious. she's not serious all the time though. You so, you act goofy. You start the whole, you start the morning off every day singing." Uh, yeah, I am, but it no. you know some people don't always see that side of things. Yeah, you know? no, we're we're very, we're like big kids. Like it comes off in the episodes sometimes, and then. Um, I don't think the whole package comes off. It will. No. As we keep recording, it will, though. Yeah. But it, we are. We're like big kids. So that's a great point is, like, not to take things so seriously. And I think that's what a lot of our past loved ones want us to do here. Um, the opposite of that would be, like, enjoying life. Like, yeah. smiling and knowing everything's going to be okay in the end because it is. I mean. Right. And live for you. Do what you want to do. Right. Don't and that's go the, off of what everyone else is doing. Or yeah, what you they can't. want you to do. You can't. And that's a problem that a lot of people fall into is like they listen to what everybody else is telling them to do. Yeah. And like don't even listen to, that's to us. That's what I was just like, thinking. We're just sharing our perspective with you and we some of it may way. resonate. Some of it may be like, wait, there, we don't agree with that. You don't have to agree with everything we say. But it's one of those this things our truth. that you listen to everybody's perspective for sure because everybody has a unique perspective. But then it's like, in the, at the end of the day, you have to know yourself. And we've, you know, we've had so many people tell us what to do and how to do different things. And some stuff we listened to. And others, we did the exact opposite of what they said. I've because, done probably more of the opposite than anything. Yeah, because and that's just how it is. Just like tapping into the other side here, like we're talking about. It's the opposite of what everybody's going to tell you to do. You, from the moment you were two years old, three years old, your parents said, you don't have an imaginary friend. You're not talking to nobody. You don't see anybody. So then most kids that, you know, most kids have that experience to where they see the other side and they have connection with it. But most kids, as they age, they shut that connection off because they're trying to be like everybody else. Yeah. So, and that, epi- that podcast episode about kids will come out after this one, by yes. the way. We already created that one. So we're excited for you to hear that. And it's one of those things that, you know, it's not saying that connecting to the other side is the right thing for you to do. But if you talk to anybody who is genuinely connecting to the other side, they will tell you that it's done nothing but great things yeah. in their life. Like, it really is. Um, I feel like I have, like everybody has, um, angels around me all the time, which everybody does. But I feel like I have a phone that I could talk to them with. And it's my own instinct. It's my own intuition. It's my own built-in technology that... I'm shaping every day. Mm -hmm. Like right now I'm shaping it by teaching about it because I feel like as you share about this, the universe loves it because the universe wants to awaken. It wants everybody to awaken and to tap into all of these senses and start to use them. That way they could impact their lives and impact everybody's lives around them because there's so much suffering around death and there's so much suffering around, oh man, I'm not going to see my mom or my grandma or my uncles or sisters or dogs or whoever passed away, I'm not going to see them anymore. There's a lot of fear behind that. Yeah. And I feel like it is like, it's not true at all. Yeah. We, and, we always have connection. Yes. And with, as mediums and being aware of this, I feel like the daily life is more beautiful. It's also a double-edged sword too, because you're highly sensitive and you're feeling a lot more. Um, and you may have more emotional things that come up in your life to give you those experiences or to make you aware of, but the big thing is, is how you move through them It is, you know, and how you're dealing with them. And it's not just about being positive. It's actually not that at all. It's about moving through the moments and taking it in and going through the pain and feeling the emotions. And then after that, then you think okay what was the lesson in that like how how did I move through that and was there a lesson and not over analyzing the lesson I know it's very easy to get trapped in oh that means I'm you know should feel shameful in this area and my lesson is I need to do it like this and I got to put all this pressure and all this work into fixing this problem it's more about like living in the moment experiencing the lesson enjoying reading a book if you want to read about a certain topic getting better but also kids can show you that and just you observing it and being aware of it could could clear that lesson too right and it's important because you're Lindsay's exactly right about this is it's not like oh you're tapping into the other side and everything's perfect from there you get messages and they just help your life 
Well, I mean, it, it is a double-edged sword. Like, yeah. you need to understand when to shut it down and how to be a human still. And not everybody's going to believe in what you're doing, and that's okay. And here's, I'll give you a little hint. Most people won't believe in what you're doing. Like, yeah. the average person, they will not believe in this. They'll look at you like you're crazy. So don't try to convince them. That's one thing. If you try to convince people... Oh my gosh, this whole gift could turn into a curse. Like it's a yeah. double edged sword. And it could, it, or it could seem like a curse to where it's like frustrating. And you're like, man, I don't even want to tap into the other side no more. But guess what? It doesn't have to be that way. There's people like Lindsay and I who we've lived through this process. We understand the ups and downs of it. And we understand how to um, center ourselves when we fall off and we start, you know. And we start to get drained from this ability, yeah. which most times it doesn't happen anymore because we're learning how to um, work with it. Right. And that reminds me of something that I just told my students when, when we were in Illinois and I was teaching that weekend. I said, the thing, expect for people to react to what you put out there. So when I first started putting out my messages from Heaven events, it was automatic. I had people reaching out to me that I, I was acquaintances with in college one, actually one person, and said, you know, what you're doing is very um, dangerous and sent me a link to his church. I said, thank you. Like, that's it. I moved along. He deleted me as a friend. Okay, that's fine. Didn't hurt. Yeah. Post something up on about messages from heaven. You're a witch. Delete. Move on. Go post something else <laughs> up. Bible verse. Delete. Move on. Like, that's it. You just keep on moving. You don't, you don't react to these comments about Bible verses and... I'm not saying the Bible's bad, but about how this is dangerous and this is a sin. Because you know what? I used to think it was a sin to go to a psychic. I didn't even know what a medium was. And at that point, when someone thinks that they're trying to help you, to save you, or to, to make sure that you're not making a sin, they're not in the same mindset of being open to receive. So you don't try to convince people. They're not there in their life. There's no point of trying to focus your energy on that. There's more energy to focus on trying to push someone into a box to make them fit and morph into what you want them to see and and the their opinions to change and there's less energy of working with people that are open to receive or maybe they're a little skeptical but for some reason they're brought to you to get a reading exactly or have a conversation or ask questions that's different but you're gonna find that you have to really focus as a medium in daily life on where you want your energy to really you know be spent on like where do you want to spend your energy as a medium because you have to remember there's more than enough people that are on the edge and open to this they might not believe in it all the way but they're on the edge and they're open right. so you need to tune your energy to attract these people into your life and then you could share uh, everything with them and they're because they're open to it and there's a point and then you know you both can grow from the relationship mm -hmm. the other relationship like Lindsay was talking about when they're coming trying they're coming trying to prove you wrong. It, it's you're, There's no good that could come out of that, really. No. So I think we should close this out okay. because we're running. Um, right. So, so let's give them maybe one thing to do to maybe. Um, surround yourself with other mediums. Surround yourself with people that get it, but also be very picky and choosy who you're surrounding yourself with. Don't put the pressure on having to be so spiritual because we're just humans connecting with the other side where it's. One person's not spiritual than the other. We're all spirit, so we don't have to be spiritual. We don't have to be, and I love that. I would, I want to say the same thing. Surround yourself with other mediums. I never looked and studied books. I never tried to tap into this. I simply have been around Lindsay, my wife, for the last seven years, and um, that's how my gifts start to awaken. It's that you become the energy you're, you're surrounded by. That's literally, I owe it to that. I think that's the number one thing you do with anything if you want to be successful at business, surround yourself with successful business people. Mm -hmm. In health, same thing. So. Yeah. Another thing, be open to see, because we see sparkles and lights everywhere yeah. at the corner of our eyes. So pay attention to those things. So we hope that you got a little insight on what it's like that you could possibly experience as a medium on a daily basis. And as you can see, we're humans, but we also are extra sensitive to the energy around us. So we hope that you enjoyed the show. Share with us some things that you've experienced from the other side. Talk to you soon. Talk to you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.
We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. If you liked it, leave a five-star review on iTunes and remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel too. If you can think of anyone else that would love this episode, share it with them right now on social media or email. And remember, getting results is a process of learning, applying, and reflecting. Stay consistent and continue to grow every day.